I'm just going to point out, you know, when I, I look at uh, the Twitter sphere, uh, ben, uh, you, don't, you don't tweet very much, but Mark tweets all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I spent all my time trying to control him. You see only <laughs> the, you know, the things that uh, don't get us into trouble. Yeah. You're in Las Vegas. Do you know uh, yeah. some friends of mine, Penn and Teller? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. I, I I don't know them. Of course, know who they are. But, yeah, but so Penn is yeah, the one who's talking right all now. the time, and Teller yeah. is the one who's silent. So yeah, it's yeah. Like in, in the, yeah, I'm, I'm Teller, right? Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So uh, I am curious, right? So just to, as we roll, as we complete the conversations on on AI, yeah. um, you know, you said this earlier, and I think you know Eric Schmidt's been saying this very loudly. Uh, we are in a race with China on on AI, and we're yeah. trying to control it by chips. Uh, you know, Mark I, said, and you're not you're not speaking on behalf of Mark, but. I am curious your thoughts about yeah. all this. Yeah, so like I, I do think we're in a race um, in the sense that, well, we are, we, we are, and we aren't. You know what I mean? So you know, DeepSeek, which is the great Chinese model right now, um, is open source. <laughs> and by the way, a lot of American companies um, that we're involved with are benefiting greatly from that. <laughs> you know, in the paper they wrote, uh, and you know, like it looks like they may have. Um, stolen some stuff from OpenAI uh, as well, uh, you know, which is um, interesting, uh, to, but just shows kind of how like hard it is to win this war by protection or this competition, I should say. Uh, look, the, the, the danger, of course, is, uh, you know, China is a top-down economy. They uh, don't believe in um, things like freedom of speech, and a lot of the kind of values of Western society, they're a surveillance state in many ways. And so a lot of the things that we like, they don't have. So if they get a much more powerful AI than us, then, you know, their way of life could trump our way of life, so to speak. Uh, now, if you look at, okay, then let's get into the details and how's that really playing out. So first of all, um, what is China good at? The, the advantage they have, which is a very clear advantage, is their private sector and their public sector, you know, their government and the private companies, there's no line between them. Yeah. Like they're, the, they're basically in a lot of ways the same thing. And as a result, the AI technology in China is getting very quickly integrated into the government, which is, you know, quite yeah. amazing the, the way uh, for I, them. I want to inject yeah. one, one thought here. Including which, the, way, the military, by the way. The way I think about it is... China is a corporate is a single corporation, yeah. And the companies inside China and within China are apps sitting on top of that, mm. that company. Yeah, I think that's a good way of uh, of thinking about it. And so you can think about well, what's our advantage? Our advantage is we're great at startups, meaning every talented person in America can solve a really hard problem and bring us forward. And that creativity. Um, because it's not centrally planned, it's kind of distributed bottoms up, uh, is, has been historically our whole advantage, right? Like that's why we've, you know, been a world leader in technology. And so the idea that we're going to just forfeit that advantage and have it be top-down control like the uh, Biden executive order imagined um, is to me the most dangerous thing in the competition is that, okay, if we try and control the way we work, all of our strengths, so we can be more China-like, China's going to destroy, they're, they're going to be way better at being China than we are, because they have all the controls and all the mechanisms in place to do they, that. Listen, communism failed um, yeah. under previous systems, but if you've got a single controlling, optimizing AI, um, communism- yeah, That would help. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. Um, yeah. Salim, what are your yeah. thoughts here? Um, you know, uh, I, I kind of don't see this tension as big as others. The reason I don't is uh, uh, disruptive innovation means you have to break the rules. And when you have a government that won't allow you to break any rules, you can't do disruptive innovation. You basically have to copy it, absorb it. So they, yeah. they, their sphere of what they can bring in is limited because of that. And so yeah. I think they are the there's a structural there's still no Chinese student that will go uh, will dare to argue against their professors. 
right? And I just find that a problem culturally for doing anything. And whereas the US has built on that, it just keeps trolling along doing that. Uh, it's messy and it's ugly, but it's very Darwinian. But by far, it's the best way of doing it. It's design versus evolution. Yeah, and we'll win. I, I, I 100% agree with that. So I think, look, our, our opportunity is we'll win. We'll get to the breakthroughs first. We probably won't stop them from stealing them, but at least we'll be even. We'll be on par. Um, whereas if we don't have the breakthroughs, we're in a lot of trouble. I like if we somehow I restrict it, well yeah. I think well you know, I, I find this interesting. We got China creating an $8 billion investment fund while we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very yeah. different ecosystem uh, of, of financial. But well, I'll, we're I'll investable, right? I mean, one of the great things that that has happened, um, you know, in the change administration is from a technological standpoint, we're a very investable country, um, whereas China is going the other way on that. They're, yeah, they're right. making themselves uninvestable. You know, I had Kai Fu Lee on this on our Moonshots podcast and talking. <laughs> Speaking about of a guy who just moved his uh, re domiciled his company. Yeah. Uh, but Kai Fu pointed out something fascinating, which is because they were so restricted on access to GPUs. Uh, this is a Darwinian force that got them to be much more efficient on their algorithms. And yeah, so well, like, we've seen that. We've seen that with DeepSeek. I mean, like it is very close to GPT-4 with way, way less, uh, uh, much smaller, uh, much smaller. Uh, their their cost per token is so low yeah. for, for, those, for those. Yeah, like 100x lower.